talk about the area of human capital in, in education. Um, 2007, McKinsey brought out its report, and I want to just quote from that as a prelude to our discussions. It says, uh, the title was how the world's best performing school systems come out on top. And it said something that as educators, we all knew for a very, very long time. That what was most important was not the amount of money you put into building a school, but what was most important was the faculty and the training that you had and the development of that faculty that you had in that school. So the most successful school systems worldwide get three things right. Number one, they get the right people to become teachers. Number two, they develop them into becoming really effective instructors. And number three, they ensure that the system is able to deliver the best possible instruction to every child. The quality of an education system cannot exceed the quality of its teachers. And that's a byline from the same book. So, where do we find the best? Who do we define as the right people? Again, the study said that the top 10 brightest students, top 10% of the brightest students of university should be brought into education. And that will ensure that you have a really, really good uh, workforce and they will deliver quality education. That depends on the status of education. So could we look at the status of it of teaching in our country? And have we as a society undermined that particular status over several decades? What does give a profession status? Is it the salary? The Sixth Bay Commission, in, to a certain extent, has addressed that, and they front-loaded it. So salaries of graduates entering the profession are at par with salaries for graduates that enter the private sector. But following that, incrementally, the growth is much, much, much slower than their counterparts in the private sector. And very much like our American counterparts, you find that 50% of teachers leave within the first uh, five years of uh, teaching.